For a second time, North Korea's Chairman Kim Jong-un meets U.S. President Donald Trump for another historic summit. Hopefully, we do as well with the second summit as we did with the first. I hope so. Back in June last year, the two leaders held their first meeting in Singapore, the first between sitting leaders of the two countries. After the summit, they adopted a joint statement composed of four clauses, including complete denuclearization. Despite the great symbolism, it was criticized for many for a lack of substance. Therefore, the two leaders are expected to achieve more concrete results at their second summit next week. Could they strike a comprehensive deal that changes the trajectory of North Korea-U.S. relations once and for all, away from confrontation and threats of nuclear war? Could they agree to negotiate for denuclearization and peace simultaneously? Ahead of the 2019 North Korea-U.S. Hanoi Summit Vietnam, let's meet with two American experts who have negotiated with the North over its nuclear program. The first expert is Christopher Hill, former Assistant Secretary of State for East Asian and Pacific Affairs, and the former head of the U.S. delegation in the six-party talks with North Korea. Ambassador Hill, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Um, the second summit for Chairman Kim Jong-un and President Donald Trump is literally just around the corner. So um, today we would like you to ask some um, insights so we can share it with our I'll viewers. do my best, <laughs> but you're right, it's, it's mm -hmm. coming just around the corner. Uh -huh. So, so um, Chairman Kim Jong-un and President Donald Trump held their first meeting um, in June last year in Singapore. Um, how would you describe the results of the first summit? Yeah. Well, uh, it was very inconclusive. Now, normally when your president meets another head of state, you expect everything to be meticulously planned so that you essentially know that it will be successful even before it starts. But we didn't really know ahead of time whether it would be successful. And then even at the end, we weren't really sure it was successful either. So I, I think it's fair to say it was very inconclusive. And that is why the second summit needs to be much more planned with many more specifics to be determined. Mm -hmm. Despite the symbolic importance of the first meeting had, um, many claim that um, it was short on substance when it comes to um, concrete details um, related to denuclearization of North Korea. Yeah. Um, what do you think will be covered during the second summit this time? Well, it was rather lacking in details, but I think President Trump made it clear that he just wanted to use it to get to know uh, Kim Jong-un, so they spent a lot of time together. So let's hope they've gotten to know each other. Uh, later, they've ex you know, they exchanged letters, and, and President Trump said they've fallen in love. Uh, so if all that's true, I think this summit really should be a summit that gets down to some of the details and leaves the public with a clear understanding that there is is progress. And so I think it's very important that the summit be well prepared. Mm -hmm. So um, speaking of progress, you mean some real tangible result? Yeah, I mean, I don't expect uh, President Trump to negotiate nuclear weapons. But I do expect him to make clear to the North Koreans that we need real progress and that uh, following the summit, they need to get serious uh, with their nuclear teams and to try to uh, come up with a roadmap, come up with a kind of plan going forward. Because, uh, you know, to, for the U.S. president to meet twice uh, within a year with uh, one leader is quite unusual. So I think they really need to show some progress. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I see. Um, actually, Seoul and Pyongyang technically remain at war um, after the Korean War ended um, with the armistice in 1953. Um, do you think 
um, this second summit will be able to end the Korean War on the Korean. I, I don't mind addressing that issue. I think it's, you know, at some point they should replace the armistice with a peace agreement. It was envisioned back in 2005 right. when we reached the joint statement. Mm -hmm. But the problem is not that. The problem is that North Korea has said they're interested in denuclearization, but they've not provided any kind of time frame for doing it. They've not kind of uh, given us what the list of their programs are so that there can be an understanding of what the sequence would be of denuclearizing. So I think they ought to focus on that rather than this very nice sounding peace uh, proposal. Again, no problem with that. But if you have that in the absence of progress on denuclearization, mm -hmm. I don't think you have very much at all. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of President Moon Jae-in, um, he played a critical role as a mediator to bring Chairman Kim and President Trump back to dialogue. Um, for the second summit, what kind of role should he play? Well, I would say more facilitator. He's facilitated uh, some talks. When things were looking bad, he was able to make sure things uh, went ahead. Look, uh, this is about the U.S. ROK alliance. Mm -hmm. And whatever we do with North Korea needs to lead to an even a stronger uh, alliance with the ROK. Mm -hmm. So whatever we do, let's, let's do it together, kapshi kapshi da, and uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. let's make sure uh, North Korea understands that it's really an unbreakable alliance. They can't be proposing steps that would somehow weaken the alliance or weaken the uh, commitments of our two countries to each other. Mm -hmm. And so let's see if we can get the North Koreans to understand that it's not for them to try to uh, uh, affect our alliance, it's for them to undertake their obligations, which are to denuclearize. Mm -hmm. um, earlier in the interview, you mentioned briefly about some real progress. Um, and I know that you have experience um, negotiating denuclearization with North Korea before. Based on your experience and also knowledge, um, what do you think needs to be done during the second summit for the two countries, for the two leaders to make some real Progress. Well, our talks over 10 years ago now did not succeed was that North Korea did not give us an adequate verification regime. They essentially said, trust us, it'll be okay. Well, that's not enough. So we need to have a, a clear understanding of, of verification. And it needs to be on the basis of some kind of international standards like the UN standards uh, put together in Vienna by the IAEA. Mm -hmm. This cannot be based on some kind of North Korean exceptionalism where everybody has a certain standard, but North Korea has something different. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I think we need to understand there's a mountain of mistrust mm -hmm. over the years. And so I, I think it's been important. I think President Trump has done a good job of trying to establish good atmospherics, a good kind of overall uh, sense that that the countries can talk together. Mm -hmm. I think that's been important. But now really is a time for specifics. Right, right. Um, speaking of the second summit, why do you think Hanoi was chosen as a venue? You know, I don't know. Uh, I, th I know the North Koreans need a place where they have some kind of embassy so they can have communications. I think it's a good symbolic choice because uh, you know, when you look at the U.S.-Vietnamese relationship, my goodness, that was very difficult right through into the 1970s. And yet today we have a good relationship with uh, Vietnam. Plus, Vietnam is doing very well with its economy. They're moving forward. They don't need nuclear weapons. So perhaps uh, on the margins of the summit, the North Koreans might take a little time to see what the Vietnamese are doing because they have been very successful. North Korea needs to understand that it can be successful in the future, but not with nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, what can we expect from this second summit? Well, we don't know. Uh, I hope we can expect more details. And I hope that overall we can look forward to a summit that is successful, that is, that isn't, uh, uh, that doesn't conclude with a lot of negativity, but rather concludes with the understanding that more work needs to be done, that working groups get set up, that 
teams of uh, people keep working on this. Again, I don't expect Donald Trump to be negotiating the details of nuclear weapons. I'm not sure I want him to negotiate the details of nuclear weapons. But So there needs to be a process set up after this uh, second summit. So we'll mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. um, Ambassador, before we wrap up our interview, is there any comments, additional comments that you would like to add for our viewers? Well, I've covered it except to say that, uh, as I said earlier, that the U.S. ROK, ROK relationship, we should try to make sure it's a stronger relationship after the summit than even before the summit. I think we're doing very well together and I think we need to continue that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your time and also sharing your insights with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's also invite Ambassador Joseph Detrani, former Special Envoy for the Six Party Talks and former President of the Intelligence and National Security Alliance to talk about the core tasks and agenda items of the upcoming North Korea-U.S. Summit, as well as the desired results. Ambassador Dietrani, thank you very much for joining us oh, today. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Uh -huh. So the second summit for Chairman Kim Jong-un and President Donald Trump is just around the corner. Yes. So we would like to ask you to share your insights with our viewers today. Well, I think it's going to be a successful summit. Mm -hmm. I think the first summit was successful uh -huh. in June, uh, uh -huh. June 12th. Uh -huh. I think this will be a successful one. I think there will be a, a good deal of substance discussed. And I think the results of the second summit mm -hmm. will, will uh, focus on denuclearization, mm -hmm. a roadmap to movement towards denuclearization, what that entails. Mm -hmm. I think the North Koreans understand the U.S. means complete, verifiable, irreversible dismantlement of all nuclear weapons and weapons programs mm -hmm. uh, to include a verification protocol. Mm -hmm. I think they understand, but this, I, I believe our president will make that very clear. Mm -hmm. Conversely, we need to hear from uh, Chairman Kim Jong-un, mm -hmm. his uh, definition of complete denuclearization. Mm -hmm. Because if we remember in the June 12th summit, mm -hmm. the four points that came out, right. the core point was denu complete denuclearization. Mm -hmm. The other was the U.S. would improve its relationship with North Korea, mm -hmm. and, they would, and then the third would be peace on the Korean Peninsula. Right. But the core being denuclearization. So it's important for the U.S. to explain what we mean, mm -hmm. for Chairman Kim Jong-un to, uh, to indicate what he, what he means by that. Mm -hmm. But equally important, it's important for us to talk about how we will reestablish a relationship with North Korea, how we would transform this relationship with mm -hmm. North Korea. Mm -hmm. And what we mean by peace on the Korean Peninsula, what we will do. Mm -hmm. Are we looking at an eventual peace treaty? Mm -hmm. Are we looking at eventually a normalization of relations? Mm -hmm. Are we talking about economic development assistance? That, that's part of that mm -hmm. issue. So I think all these issues will be discussed. Mm -hmm. And I think the final result will be a determination on the part of Chairman Kim Jong-un and President Donald Trump mm -hmm. that their lead negotiators mm -hmm. will be meeting routinely mm -hmm. to come up with a roadmap mm -hmm. to give particulars on denuclearization, mm -hmm. on transformation of a relationship, mm -hmm. and also on, on peace if you will, in the, on the Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why I think it will be successful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you think um, there will be some concrete details? Yes, yes, but I think the first summit also had details. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about three of the major points. Mm -hmm. The other was the returns of the uh, remains of the uh, American soldiers right. who died in the Korean War. Mm -hmm. And that's happened, mm -hmm. uh, and that will continue. Mm -hmm. The other three are important, complete denuclearization, transformation of the relationship with North Korea, mm -hmm. and peace on the Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. I think those four points are very important. Mm -hmm. I think the criticism was mm -hmm. implementation. How do you go about doing those things? Right. Right. And for the last seven months, there have been no meetings between our principal negotiators. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of skepticism in the United States, I would think so, in the Republic of Korea, saying, wait a minute, the leaders came together they decided on these four major points. Mm -hmm. Movement on the remains of the Americans who lost their lives in the Korean War, yes. But the other three points, nothing happened. So I think this time, I think the leaders, I think our president and Chairman Kim Jong-un would indicate we now have mandated, basically we've charged our lead negotiators to routinely meet so that within a few months, they come back to us, the leaders, mm -hmm. 
of the U.S. and the DPRK, mm -hmm. and they give us a roadmap on how they would move forward. Mm -hmm. I think that would be that would be so. I, I I don't I think the criticism of the first summit I think is a bit unfair. Mm -hmm. I think the first summit put us on a path, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now we're moving down that path. Mm, I see, I see. Uh, then what's your view on lifting sanction um, during this? That's, a good, that's another good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, those are UN Security Council resolutions that impose those sanctions. Mm -hmm. and, and I think in many ways, because of those sanctions, uh, I think it encouraged Chairman Kim Jong-un to come to the table to say these sanctions are biting. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and moreover, he's, he made a decision, a strategic decision, I believe, mm -hmm. to focus on economic development. Right. So sanctions have been very, very important in this equation. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that sanctions per se will be lifted. Mm -hmm. I think there could be workarounds for some of the sanctions. Mm -hmm. I think that, but there could be other things that are done to mitigate some of those issues that, that touch uh, if you will, the livelihood of the people in North Korea, you, uh, the uh, humanitarian mm -hmm, issues, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, energy uh, assistance, and, right. and so forth. So, so I don't know that sanctions per se would be lifted. Mm -hmm. I, I think the U.S. commitment is to stay with the international community and keep those sanctions on the books mm -hmm. and, and, and implement them, uh, but maybe to work around a few of them, to look for exceptions. Mm -hmm. There could always be exceptions. You could always have an exception right. on certain things. Mm -hmm. And then to have, and then to complement it, uh, you could have a further investment. You could, you could, you could move in different directions. So, mm -hmm. I think there would be lots of discussions about sanctions. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that sanctions per se will be lifted, but mm -hmm. I think there will be movement on providing North Korea with the uh, economic development assistance it needs. Mm. Um, President Moon Jae-in, what kind of role should it play for the second summit? Well, you know, President Moon Jae-in is the reason we're sitting here having this discussion. Mm -hmm. It was President Moon Jae-in who, re who was responded to uh, Chairman Kim Jong-un and invited him to join the uh, South Korean mm -hmm. Olympic team, the Winter Olympics, but also to have uh, three summits right. and to have all the progress you're making on the DMZ with uh, some very major initiatives on the Northern Limit Line, some major initiatives. That's, that's President Moon Jae-in. And it was President Moon Jae-in who arranged for President Donald Trump to actually have uh, uh, the initial meeting and now the second summit with uh, Kim. Mm -hmm. uh, and also it was President Moon Jae-in who made it very clear the core issue is denuclearization. Right. We're totally in sync. So I guess saying that indicates President Moon Jae-in really <laughs> initiated this uh, rapprochement movement towards reconciliation. So he will continue to play. I can't imagine anything else, a very key leadership role mm -hmm. as we move forward with implementation of, if well, in regards to denuclearization, mm -hmm. security assurances, economic development assistance, mm -hmm. and normalization of relations. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think both he, President Moon Jae-in, and President Donald Trump will be working hand in hand Mm -hmm. on all these issues. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. no question about that. I know you have experience um, negotiating with North Korea before related to denuclearization. Yes. And based on your past experience and also your knowledge, uh, what do you think needs to be done um, during the Hanoi summit for Pyongyang and Washington to make some real progress? Okay, we need to be totally Frank, we need to be very, very clear mm -hmm. on what we mean when we use words like denuclearization, mm -hmm. when we talk about normalizing the relationship, when we talk about security assurances. We need to define these things so there's no ambiguity. Mm -hmm. Both sides understand what's on the table. Mm -hmm. North Korea understands what we mean by denuclearization, complete, verifiable, irreversible dismantlement. They understand that we want a verification protocol mm -hmm. that permits monitors to leave non-declared suspect nuclear sites. Mm -hmm. That's things we, we need clarity on that. Mm -hmm. North Korea needs clarity from us. When we say we'll give you security assurances, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. How, what sort of assurances are you giving? Okay, liaison office, ultimately normalization of relations. Mm -hmm. What other non-aggression pact? There are many things. Mm -hmm. I think both sides, both sides need to be very clear in the beginning as we continue with this this major, mm -hmm. uh, a very uh, 
important process mm -hmm. to normalize and, and stabilize the relationship and to bring peace to the peninsula, mm -hmm. that everything be put on the table from all sides. So there's no ambiguity. So I think we're at a, at a, at a very critical inflection point here mm -hmm. where this process can move quickly, move forward in a, in a very meaningful way where we could see success mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. I don't mean in six months or a year. Mm -hmm. It could be two years. It could be five years mm -hmm. when we get complete denuclearization. But the process can move quickly on issues like security assurances, mm -hmm. building that trust and confidence, liaison offices, talking about a declaration that speaks to a peace treaty eventually as this process moves forward. Mm -hmm. So we're at a very, very uh, uh, important critical uh, and, and critical point. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's so unique because this is all new. Mm -hmm. This is new mm -hmm. for the United States mm -hmm. right. and certainly new for North Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not new for the Republic of Korea. Uh, you have your former uh, presidents, uh, Kim Dae Jung, uh, No Mo Yun. You've had meetings, and now President Moon Jae In. Mm -hmm. But for the United States, it's new, mm -hmm. and I think we have to remember that, because in the United States, we, we still remember, and it's a, cer certainly the North Koreans remember it also, the Korean War. Mm -hmm. We remember some of the episodes subsequent to the Korean War, where we've seen significant hostility from North Korea. So the American mindset, and then we've had negotiations for 25 years, as you said. And I have experience, as you indicated, working on it. And what I got from that experience was this. You have to keep talking. You have to keep talking. You have to build that relationship. Mm -hmm. And you have to, as quickly as you can, build the infrastructure, the foundation, so that we will be successful. Mm -hmm. Look for the small successes. You just can't get complete, verified, irreversible dismay immediately. Mm -hmm. And you can't expect North Korea to sort of e easily give that up. Mm -hmm. It's their security. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it ba basically, it's, it's uh, and they make it very clear. I think Kim Jong-un has made it very clear. Uh, it's, it's, it's their nuclear deterrent. Mm -hmm. But also we've made it clear North Korea with nuclear weapons uh, is really never going to bring stability peace to the region, mm -hmm. certainly to the peninsula. Mm -hmm. So I think they understand that. So, as you said, trust but verify. Mm -hmm. keep, at, keep at the table, mm -hmm. focus on the goals and objectives, mm -hmm. and look for small successes and keep working on that. Mm -hmm. And then we will, we will come together on these mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. um, my last question. Yes. Um, yes. Do you have any additional comments to add for our viewers? Well, you know, one, uh, and I mentioned it, uh, I think President Moon Jae-in has just been outstanding and, and uh, has facilitated something that's so important. We're, and as I mentioned a minute, we're at, an, at an, a very critical inflection point. Because I think if we're not successful now, we've come this close. And we've come close before, but never this close. We're so close. And if, if for some reason it's derailed, if for some reason it fails, if for some reason there's no success there, and, 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 and the parties sort of say, well, we can't come to an agreement. I think things will go back to where they were in 2017, which was very, a tense period of maximum pressure. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, not only maximum pressure, but also fire and fury, mm -hmm. and the potential for, uh, for uh, the possibility, uh, God forbid it should never happen, of stumbling into conflict mm -hmm. on the Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. so, so my view is, we're at, people should be, I, I, obviously I know people are critical, there's, there's a reason for the skeptics being skeptical and all that, but I think we should also be very hopeful mm -hmm. and also uh, I think sort of pleased with, certainly with President Moon Jae-in, but mm -hmm. certainly President Donald Trump, but also, also mm -hmm. President Xi Jinping has had four meetings with Kim Jong-un and, right. and certainly with Kim Jong-un, this is the man who's ultimately made the decisions. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's the one that's looking at the country's security and, you know, his survival. You know, survival. Mm -hmm. Nuclear weapons in North Korea speak to the survival of the leadership mm -hmm. of the regime in North Korea. To give that up, it's key. Mm -hmm. So we should be very pleased that this young leader mm -hmm. is saying, okay, I understand nuclear weapons are needed for my survival and, the, and, and, the, and my country's survival. Mm -hmm. I'm prepared to give them up for security assurances, economic development assistance, movement towards a normal relationship, a peace treaty, et cetera. We should applaud that. And I think we have, and we are. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we have to keep moving forward. 
Because if we move backward, mm -hmm. it, it, will, it could get worse quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. not where we want to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Ambassador, thank you very much well, for your you. time thank and you. also well, sharing thank your, you your insights with questions. us today. <laughs> thank you. Next time I'll ask you the questions. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. After months of anticipation and numerous working level and high level talks, the 2019 North Korea US summit is finally just one week away. What will be the results of their meeting? One thing we can be sure of at this point is that the two sides will work hard to prove that substantive progress is being made on a myriad of issues to build a peaceful Korean peninsula and a peaceful world.